Hey, good morning, everyone. The voice Pastor Q. Uh, thank all you guys for joining me again for our 11 a.m. service. If you missed the 9 a.m. this morning, you always have time to go back and watch it. I thank all you guys for your support. I thank you uh, for your attendance this morning. I thank God, man. Struggled a little bit this morning. Um, all of a sudden, a cough came on. I'm doing well. I'm okay. Um, his all, the enemy's always trying to attack, but I thank God he brought me through that and allowed me to... Uh, still be able to uh, deliver his word this morning. I'm definitely excited to be back for the 11 a.m. service. Um, it's like round one, round two, you know, the second half, as they say. So hopefully the second half, I can redeem myself uh, for the attack that had uh, come over me. So I thank God for that. Thank God for the attack. I thank God for all you guys uh, riding with me. And I've seen that um, right as I begin to cough, uh, I looked at the comments and went back and a lot of you guys begin to pray and to intercede and and I became well. So I thank God for that. Um, I don't have no have, have nothing, not sick. Sometimes I deal with allergies and things, but I do believe in spiritual attacks. I do believe in spiritual attacks. And I believe that it was designed to get me off and to get me off course. But uh, through your prayers, um, not through my own power or might, but it was definitely through the prayers of the believers that I was able to finish the service this morning. So God has given me two words as always. I thank God for that. Um, this morning, um, we're going to talk about having no audience. Uh, God dealt with me in the teaching this week of having no audience. So this morning word is going to be called no audience. Um, God wants to speak a powerful message to you guys this morning about having no audience. Um, we're going to go into a word of prayer. We're going to start the service, open up with a word of prayer and allow God to be able to uh, lead me with some things I've seen something he showed me, something he wanted me to speak on, because everything that I go through as a pastor being transparent is things that you're going to go through. And what you're going through right now, you have to you have to go through it because somebody you're going to meet is need is going to need to be able to hear your uh, testimony about what you've been through, how you got over, as they used to say in the old hymns and how God brought you through it. So um, go through whatever you're going through, as the Bible says in the book of James, count it all joy. Because what you're going through is going to be able to be a blessing to so many people. You're going to be able to help so many great people in your and what you're going through. Amen. Praise God. So listen, Father, we just thank you right now for your message right now. Thank you that you're blessed us to be able to do it, oh Father God. We thank you for the second service. Thank you with two or more gather you on the miss. Thank you, Father God, that even though we're social distancing, oh Father God, we're close to you. Thank you, Father, for this time, for healing us, keeping us. We pray, oh, Father God, for just so many so many things that happened around us. But we just thank you, Father, right now for your grace, your mercy. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you be lifted up. You be drawn all men unto you. Praying that the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon me, oh, Father God. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your great teaching, oh, Father God. And all these things we pray and we ask in, in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, I read a comment by NFL star, um, what's the guy's name? Ern Donald. Pray, plays for the Rams. Uh, and Aaron Donald made a comment along with some other NBA players. They says, how can we play the game with no audience? Because they want to be able to play football. They want to be able to play basketball, but they're concerned about having an audience. And some people say, we don't feel comfortable playing without an audience. Playing without an audience means playing without fans, like um, playing without people in the seats, playing without attendance. And God began to show me something. I remember early in ministry when I was at William Beans Elementary School. And um, before I even had people follow and watch, even actually come to the service, I've always had a Facebook following that God has allowed me to be able to have. And before then, even in preaching in prisons, nobody will hardly show up. I became very discouraged as a pastor to preach and have no one in the audience. I believe I heard God one time loud and clear that God told me to preach to the chairs and God wanted to see if I would be faithful over the little things he would make me ruler over much. I stood on that scripture and I began to preach and there was nobody in the seats. I remember having services at William Beans Elementary School and one or two people would show up. I remember having many services at William Beans Elementary School and nobody would show up. It would just be me and my camera on Facebook as it is today. I did not know that 10 years ago that God was preparing me for a time as of now. I did not know that God was preparing me how to be able to stand before him without an audience. I did not know that God was preparing me to be able to go alone that when nobody else went that I wouldn't be discouraged. Today's message is about not having a audience. 
God is speaking to somebody today to say you don't need an audience. You don't need the support. God wants to see if you're going to be faithful with what he has given you when you don't have an audience, when you don't have supporting cast, when you don't have fans. Will you still be faithful? Will you still be obedient? The NFL and NBA players saying they don't want to play a game without fans, a game that you love, a game that you grew up in the backyard throwing the football around, a game that you had to go play on the basketball court before but before by yourself before you even had fans god says that the thing that you're doing now you once did without fans you cooked be without fans you did some things before fans why can't you go back to a place where you do things without an audience god says there's so many people who can't have church right now and don't know the how now how to have church because they need an audience so many people can't even preach right now because they can't preach without an audience somebody can't sing right now because they can't sing without an audience but if you're a real singer and you give God glory it doesn't matter if it's one person or 1,000 people there if you do what you do for the love of God and you do what you do because of passion you don't need an audience I don't know who I'm talking to today but somebody needs to understand that I'm going to continue to go whether I have an audience or not whether I have support or not I have been in a place in my life where I have done this before by myself. If I have to raise these kids by myself, if I have to pay these bills by myself, if I have to be my only supporter and, and encourage myself, I don't need an audience to be able to do what God has called me to go do. Well, if I have to go by myself, I don't need a whole lot of people to hang out with. I don't need a whole lot of people to do what I have to do. I Therefore, I don't need an audience. All I need is God. As we learned this morning, God is essential. NFL and NBA players saying, we don't feel comfortable playing without an audience. The first scripture of teaching I want to touch on is my good friend Noah. Noah had to build a ship without an audience, without a supporting cast, without pe people sitting around talking about him, but he did not have an audience. Do you know what it's like to be able to preach and not have a audience? Do you know how it, what it's like to be able to preach and see empty chairs and have nobody say, amen, preach pastor, pastor, you get it, You and, and, and to encourage you through your teaching and still be preaching like there's somebody in the seat. Do you know how much of a challenge I went through and how discouraging it was every Sunday to show up in one person in the seat and sometimes show up to the school with all the seats empty just to keep preaching and nobody's there. Do you know what was happening in that point? God says right there and there in that point you when you had nobody to preach to in the physical, I was trying to teach you, design you, to mold you to be a person who's able to keep going without people. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but God says the reason why I have moved people out of your life is so that you can learn how to function without an audience because the bad thing about an audience, if you have an audience all the time, you won't feel comfortable doing things without an audience. Some people can't do things without a lot of people. If somebody tell you they're not going to the mall, you don't feel like going. If somebody tell you they're not going, then you don't go. God says sometimes you have to learn how to even go out to eat by yourself and sit by yourself, sit at the bar by yourself, go places by yourself. But if you always need an audience, if you always need a pack, you'll never get nothing done because you always need an audience. I thank God in the beginning of this ministry that I, that he allowed me to not have an audience, allowed me to not be able to have members, allowed me to not be able to have supporters because now it has made me this tough cookie, right? Where I don't need anybody to preach. I don't need a whole bunch of people to say amen. I don't need a lot of people to type. I don't need a lot of people to say you like that. I don't need a lot of people to encourage. All I need is an opportunity to be able to preach. God told me to preach to the chairs and the empty chairs will soon be filled if I would be able to show my faithfulness. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but God says if you're doing it for an audience, you're doing it for the wrong reasons because people turn on and off like a light switch. They'll love you today. They'll hate you tomorrow, but you have to be able to stand firm in what I've called you to do because the calling that I'm giving you is not going to have a great audience. I say, God, I understand what you're saying. He says, Q, because I'm going to teach you to be able to teach the truth. You got to understand that you're not going to have an audience. There's not going to be a, always, a, there's not always going to be a lot of supporters and people that support you. Don't look for the audience. Look for my support. Look for my anointing. Look and know that I will never leave you nor forsake you. God says the audience does not represent my anointing. The amount of people doesn't represent, uh, um, it, it doesn't mean that you're prospering. 
it's such a hard path to be on for those who are on social media. Because when you're on social media, you do everything for social media. We understand there's a like button and, and, and there's things and there's a view and there's things that keep views and keeps likes. The bad thing about social media is that you can get depressed with social media. You can get lost in social media because you find out that people stop liking your stuff. You see that people are stop viewing your stuff. But if you do what you do for God, it doesn't matter how many likes you get. How many views you get? It doesn't matter about the audience. It doesn't matter who shared it, who liked it. It just matters that that was my post. That's how I felt. I put it out there and I didn't put it out there for a reaction. I put it out there because that's how I felt and I paid his phone bill and this is my page and I can post it what I want to post on it. When you have that type of attitude, you know you don't need an audience, but there are people who have come to me in the past and say, Pastor, I noticed that your views are down. And I say, yeah, yeah, I understand my views have been down, but you're talking to somebody who has preached in front of empty chairs. You, it doesn't matter if you don't like it because you have to remember you're talking to somebody who preached in front of empty chairs. It doesn't matter if you support because I've come from a place where I've preached in front of empty chairs and I was paying rent in a building where I was receiving no tithes, no offerings and empty chairs. And I'm still here today and for preaching in front of empty chairs. And now I'm back in my element because nobody can go into any builders now now god has everybody on the level he had me on in the beginning with no building just empty chairs forcing you to do what i was forced to do in the beginning now i'm in my comfort zone because this is what i do isn't it amazing the thing that they talked about the thing that i struggle with to preach in front of a camera with no members now this is the thing to do 10 12 years ago this wasn't the thing to do to baby to go live now we all are forced to go live back then you had more members in your church than me because um, I didn't have any members. I just had a camera. I just had a phone. Now we're both on an equal playing field. Guess what? There's a lot of pastors I found out of great teaching that can't preach right now because they need an audience. Having a phone in front of them, it's not the same feeling. I don't care what nobody tell you. When you practice in band or you sing in band or sing in choir, it's a different feeling when you practice and have an audience. I don't care what nobody say. The amens and you go there and the clapping of people makes you feel some type of way. And when you don't have that, it makes you feel different. It can cause you to get depressed. It can cause you to feel a certain way about your gift. Somebody right now is thinking about giving up on something that's good because they're not being supported the way they feel like they should be supported. And let me tell you, you have something good. But the problem is you don't know that you have something good without having an audience. You have to have you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that what you have is good and you are all that. Even if ain't nobody clapping, you got to be able to look in the mirror and encourage yourself and talk to yourself and speak over yourself and say, hey, I don't care if don't nobody like it. I don't care if don't nobody love it. I love it. They don't have to like it. I love me. I look good. I feel good. I'm blessed. I got to be able to encourage myself because I don't have a lot of people encouraging me. I got a lot of people talking down on me, but I don't need an audience to go forward. I don't need an audience to build the ark. This is what Noah's saying. I don't need the ark. I don't need an audience. All I need is to go for wood. All all I need is to be able to hear from you. There's so many people that need an audience. We can't stop playing till we have an audience. How many people out there? I can't go out until I have an audience. I'm not singing in front of two people. I'm not preaching in front of four people. Once it's about 15, 20, but I'm not going on. God has taught me. God has shown me how to go forward without an audience. When you go forward without an audience, you don't need everybody's support to be able to do what you're going to do. When you're a leader, a leader steps out, not caring about who going to support, who not going to support. I don't need an audience to do what I want to do. Matter of fact, some of you need an audience to be able to fight. You need somebody, baby, to go with you. No, -uh. me, when I go fight, I just take me and I know I'm okay. But some people can't fight without an audience. Wolves don't go no places to fight without an audience. They got to be able to gather up other wolves. So it means and tell me that if you don't have no other wolves around you, then you don't feel comfortable doing what you do. Noah said, I'm very comfortable building the ark without myself. I don't need help. Don't need an audience. Can I teach you that some people do things for an audience? This is social media. Most people do things to get an audience. And then when they don't get an audience, that's when they start taking their clothes off of great teaching. Somebody right now was thinking, what can I do to get an audience? What do I got to take off? 
Who do I got to offend? What can I post to be able to draw an audience because I have such a need for people? Noah would not be able to build the ark if he needed, a, if he needed an audience. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you don't need an audience. I've been doing this for 10 years and I started off without an audience. I preached for chairs. I showed God that regardless of who shows up, I'm going to go before him. God made me a pack. He made me an offering. He, I mean, he, made, he, he made me a pack. And this is what God said to me. God says, I will, I will continue to supply all of your needs. I will continue to pay the bills in whatever ever facility you go to if you show me that you'll do it and you're not doing it for people. Before I got here, and I, I don't even consider myself anywhere far, but before I got here, I had to show God that I would do what I would do for him without an audience. And I wasn't preaching to gain people. He says, Q, you got to understand. If a man preaches for no audience, he won't change once he gets an audience. Because one thing about preaching without an audience and living without an audience, you know, I don't have a fear of not going back to that place. Sometimes you got to remind somebody and say, you can take the card. You can take everything that you want to take from me because there was a time where I did not have it and I was good. Job could have basically said to the devil, you can take everything you want to take because there was a time when I didn't have it and I was good. Something about people who need an audience or need things are in fear of losing things because if I lose things, I'm going to lose my audience because sometimes people are only my audience because of the things that I have. And I'm willing to say, listen, whatever you need to take, you can take what you don't make me. I can get it right back. I was fine without it. I'm cool with it. But in all things, I'm content. I'm, I'm, I'm okay right here. You can have the TV. You can have the ring. You can have it. Whatever it is you bought with you. Matter of fact, whatever you bought, you can have. I would rather you take all your things because I remember living in a time where I didn't have an audience. So Job knew what it was like to be able to live without an audience, without to be able to have all the things that he have. Sometimes you got to tell the enemy, I don't care what you take. Lord, just don't allow them to take my life. You can have all this stuff. I don't need an audience. You can't be afraid to allow people to leave your church, leave your group, leave your life. If you want to leave, you should be able to open the door for people and say, hey, I don't, I trust in my God to know that whatever you were paying in tithes, Whatever you were paying and offering, whatever you was contributing toward the rent, whatever you were contributing toward the groceries, whatever you were thinking about giving toward child support, I'm going to get that regardless if you do it or not. I'm not afraid of losing anybody in this season because I've come from a season where I don't didn't have anybody and I managed to do it. Now that you're here, this is not a necessity. This is just a tip because this has always been taken care of and and, and whether whether you stay or whether you go, this bill, these bills are going to get paid. I had to let some people know in ministry, whether you stay or you go, I'm still going to get the rent paid. So guess what? I don't want you to think that you're taking your money with you because every time I lose a member, God, God gives me somebody else to give that same $20 that you were given. It was only $20 that you were given. You don't think God can give me another person to give me $20 toward my ministry? You don't think God can give me somebody to give me $5? You walking out of here with $5 a week and with an attitude of $5 a week, you don't think my God can supply me with another $20 a month of that which you're given? You can go on because guess what? He did it before you got here. You got to have boldly coming for the throne of faith, faith, encouragement in God and be able to tell people, listen, I don't need nothing that you bring to the table. I've been doing this with me and God alone. I've been doing this without an audience. So therefore, let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. Take your stuff with you. I'm okay with doing things without an audience. I'm okay with doing things by myself. So don't think I'm going to be discouraged when I don't have an audience. You must understand great teaching. Let me take you since I'm already in it. I'm in the meat of the, me the message now. Turn with me, I believe, it's to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13. I want to turn your attention toward the 8th verse. 
Then listen, this is around the time that Saul is king. Saul is supposed to be waiting on Samuel to come before he does the offering or the sacrifice. But Samuel delays a little bit. But I want to teach you the type of king Saul was. Saul was the king that the people asked for. And God gave them a king after their own heart and after his own heart. King David was the king after God's own heart. When the people of Israel asked for a king, he gave them the type of king of the king. The king had a heart of the people. The bad thing about having a king or a president or any type of leader that has the heart of a people, that means he does things and he becomes a people pleaser. I, I want to be honest with you and I want to get you to understand great teacher. I don't want a leader that has a heart of the people. I want a leader that has a heart for God because a leader with a heart for the people will do things to please people. But a leader that has a heart for God will do things to please God, though it doesn't please people. A people pleaser will please people before he pleases God. Even if it's a pastor, can I teach you 90%, and I'm going to say 90, that's a hard word, people are of pastors, are people pleasers. They preach for amens. They write sermons for amens. Somebody was up all last night writing something and saying, I know that they're going to give. I know that they're going to shout. Lord, give me a message that they're going to give. Give me a message that they're going to shout. But the pastor that has a heart for God preaches against sin, preaches and knows he's going to step on toes, preaches knowing that he's going to offend. But the pastor that wants to get an offering and wants to be like is thinking of a message right now to draw you in, to be able to make you a member. He's a people pleaser. When the people start leaving the church, he's going to get with the parishioners and say, what can we do to get the people back in the church? How about you get in the face of God and allow God to get the people in the church? Stop altering your message to make your message sound like Joe Osteen's and T.D. Jakes. Stop making your message acceptable to the place that you've compromised the whole word of God just to pay the rent so you can pay your car note. God says, listen, I don't want a man who is a people pleaser. He moves by people. Soon as people start leaving the church, he changes the message. Now he wants to go do ministry because of the fact people ain't coming to church. I want a man that serves me and don't care who's offended. Long as he has me, long knows that the people in the church don't pay the bills. I pay the bills. If he is a people pleaser, he can never be king. That's why King Saul failed. That's why King David passed. That's why certain people don't last because what? They are people pleasers. A woman can't stand a man who is a people pleaser. I don't like people that's people pleasers. The people sway you. You you felt good coming out the house with what you had on and you let somebody tell you that didn't look good. You felt good doing what you were doing and you let somebody talk you out of what you're supposed to be doing. How do you let people tell you what's hot, what's not, what's right, what's wrong, what's cute, what's not, what should be put together, what, who you should be dating, who you should, how you should be living, what ministry you should be going to. Some of you too many parents pleasers, your mother in your business, your father in your business, your good good girlfriends in the business. You don't even have your own identity. Somebody that talked you out of every blessing, every relationship. You need to tell your mother to sit down. I know the scripture says honor thy mother and father, but you will keep trying to please her and you won't keep nobody. She couldn't keep your father. Your father couldn't keep your mother. You keep trying to please people who can't keep nobody. God says I don't want people who are people pleasers. I need people who know how to move and maneuver when they don't have an audience. You need somebody to back you. You need a yes man. You need somebody to say amen. I preach with no amens, no get it pastor, nobody running to the front, putting dollars at my feet, no band, no choir. You got to understand I come from a season where I didn't have anything, no members, no shares, no likes, none of that stuff. And you say, what keeps me going? Because my God provided everything I had, made me look like I had a mega church when I didn't have two members, had me dressing and driving like I had a mega church when I didn't have five members. My God kept me when you didn't. So when you feel comfortable enough to take your money with you, you can go because guess what? You don't take your money with 
with you. You don't make me. You don't make Pastor Q. You don't make this ministry. Your pastor can't say that. He can't tell you to leave. He depends on your five, your 10, your 25, your 50. But I stand boldly before God and say, I don't need a dime of yours. I will go shop in Neiman Sachs and do whatever I do by $1,100 tennis shoes without your $5. You must let it be known. I've been doing this for 10 years and still haven't had 50 to 100 members. And I drive good, look good, dress good, do all those things as those with more members than me do because my God supplies my needs. I'm not scared to lose people the way I dress. Pastor, you shouldn't dress tight sweatpants, tight sweatshirt. You're going to cause to mess up your audience. Notice I haven't changed because I know who got me to this point. I don't need an audience. You need an audience. That's why you wear suits. That's why you dress up. You need an audience. Guess what? I don't need an audience. I've done it before by myself. I stand on that. I stamp that. I'm a soldier in that. I'm not a wolf. I don't run in pack. I am a lion. Lion don't need a whole bunch of other lions. He's the king of the jungle. He roars, makes his presence known. You're a wolf. You're a hyena. You're a piranha. You need backup. You need people with you. Matter of fact, when you ain't got nobody, you ain't got no hands. You a sucker unless you got an audience. Have you ever seen a person that got carriage once they got people behind them. I'm the same person with or without 10 people. I still walk in my integrity. I don't care how many people with you. You ain't going to talk to me that type of way. I'm going to talk to you like I got some other people with me. I'm going to talk to you like I got a gun on me. That's how I talk to people. I talk to four people like I got a gun on me. And they say, man, he can't be talking to them. He talk like he's strapped. He talk like he got somebody with him. No, I don't change my attitude because you have more people. You got to get blessed with what I said now. David stood before Goliath. He said, Goliath, you're taller than me. You're bigger than me. He said, you come to me with sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Goliath, I got God with me. I don't care nothing about your soldiers. I don't care nothing about your height. I don't care nothing about all of that. All I know is that I have not had an audience. I beat the lion. I beat the bear. The God that has brought me to this point has been with me before I came to you. He has done this without an audience. I don't need an audience. I don't need an army. I don't need Saul's gear. All I need is what I've needed in the beginning. Just my God, no audience. My integrity won't, don't change. My words don't change. I don't allow me being outnumbered to make me back down and tuck my tail. I don't tuck my tail for nobody. I don't care how many it is. I'm going to get jumped with this mouth. This mouth is going to get me jumped. This mouth is going to get me in trouble. But one thing I won't do is bow down to no image because it's more of me. I don't care about the fiery furnace. Don't care about the lion's den. I don't need an audience. I don't need everybody else to agree on what I'm doing. I don't need no audience. I've played the sport by myself. I've shot on the court by myself. I have cooked by myself. I've done all things that I do good now by myself. I don't really need an audience. Don't talk to me about an audience. You got an audience. Well, see, Gideon had an audience. And come to find out, out of the 20, 10, 20 something thousand, 10,000 he had, he only had 300 that was worth even being there. That what God was trying to show. I know I got 5,000 Facebook friends, but listen, I don't. I, I got 29 right people right now for an audience. That means there's another 4,000 something that's not in attendance. I, I don't want that type of audience. So you got to understand, don't get, don't misinterpret having amount of friends for supporters. We all on this. We know that somebody on here just to keep their 5,000 friends. Let me get back into the scripture of teaching. First Samuel 13, 8. Then he waited seven days according to the set time by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him. Saul was waiting for Samuel to come. But notice that the scripture says what? And the people were scattered from him. He, he started to get worry when he saw the people leaving. You know, it's amazing that we get fearful and when we see people leaving, I wonder why he unfriend me. I wonder why she unfriend me. You, I know such and such been distant lately. They ain't been tithing. They ain't been coming. They been like, you ever wonder, is there anything okay? See, when you have them type relationships with people, you don't even have, listen, I got friends I ain't talked to in six months and we still good. If, if I got to be in a relationship with you as a friend, 
And I got to wonder why I ain't heard from you in a week that I offend you or something like that. We don't need to be friends because I swear I got dudes I didn't talk to for years. And when we pick up, we pick up right where we left off. Ain't no, you don't call me, I don't call you. Listen, I don't know about you, but I don't want them type of friends that but just because I miss a week calling them, they take it personal. Nah, it, it, we obviously, we don't need to be friends. If one bad day caused me and you to have a falling out, we don't need to be friends. I, I, I need the type of friends that understand I might go through two, three months of dealing with some things that have nothing to do with you, but understand I'm going to come out of it. And if you my friend, you should know that we may haven't talked to me in a while, but I'm not being phony or fake or hold anything against you. Just understand I might be going through a season where he has called me to be quiet. And since he called me to be quiet, I might not be reaching out as much, but I might come around to a cookout or function. But when I'm dealing with me, it has nothing to do with you. I don't need the type of friends that when I'm not calling and texting and liking stuff, they take it and feel some type of way because they're not hearing from me and they feel like I didn't social distance from them. No, I'm just trying to get me together. I need the type of friends that I don't talk to all the time, but still pray for me and notice that, hey, that's cute. That's still my man. I ain't got to worry about it. When we pick back up or we go to the bar or I see you at the cookout, notice ain't nothing changed. I've just been trying to get me together. I don't need them type of friends. I ain't heard from in a while, I got to be the first to call you. You don't pick up call. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't need that. I don't deal well in that. That is feminine to me, and I'm not saying feminist isn't gay, isn't homosexual. I'm just saying I'm a male, and I don't have those type of feminine genes. I don't get into all that. I don't carry those type of emotions. I don't sit back and say the last time you text, last time you call. I don't go back on my page to see that you haven't been liking and sharing stuff. I, I, I don't do that. I don't hold. I got too much other stuff going on to be going on Facebook trying to figure out who hasn't liked and shared in a while. I, I got too much time and too many other things to be figured out who haven't tied. All I know is that my checks are coming in. I'm not worried about your five, your 20, or your 50. All I know is how to put my own jeans on and get up and go to work and get what's mine. I don't got time to worry about who ain't giving. That's not the type of life I live. I'm a whole man over here. I don't deal in them type of emotions. I don't have that much time on my hand to be going through no page and seeing who don't share, who don't like, who ain't supporting, who don't like this outfit, who's saying what. I don't got time to read indirect messages that's really about me. I like them all. I don't care if they are about me. I don't have time to be trying to figure out what you really going through secretly. You feeling some type of way about me, posting about me. I'm not going to respond to it even if I know it's about me because I got other things and other things I need to be doing for God. I'm busy for God. I ain't got time for that. I don't need that type of audience. Don't need that type of energy. I just don't need this type of thing going on because listen, I've been doing this thing with no audience. Somebody preach with me now, understand what he's saying. Saul got to a place where he got insecure because the people left. Come on, man, listen. The people didn't call you. God called you. Why are you upset when people leave if God called you? If God called you, he's going to supply the people. If the people leave, and that means they ain't supposed to be there. This is how you pray. God, send me people. Don't let me get insecure, upset because I don't have people. Remove the people that ain't supposed to be. Can I teach you sometime? He allows the leaves to fall off the trees so that the new leaves can come. I blessed you with that this morning. Allow people to leave. Listen, be a gentleman. Hold the door for them. Keep the door unlocked so that they can leave out. Let them leave and come back in. But don't you dare lock a door to keep somebody in there. No, no, that's not you do. You be a gentleman. Matter of fact, if people want to leave, you should be a gentleman. You should be a woman and open up the door for them that they may leave. Don't try to stop them from leaving. It. How can I do to make you come? You know, there's so many people who attend this ministry I've been in and they want me to rub their backs because they feel some type of way. And I stopped coming because you said something in the service one day. And um, it just didn't resonate with my spirit. I'm fine with that. Because what I said, I was told to say. Now, if it offended you, let me hold the door for you. Because I preach under the anointing to God. I don't always say things that's going to make you feel some type of way and all warm and fuzzy. Matter of fact, I was told to say what I said. I don't got time to stroke members' egos to be able to keep people. You can unfollow. You can unfriend. You can stop coming. Trust and believe. I have no lack. I don't know what it is about people that think when they stop buying and supporting and liking and buying the dinners and supporting what you do, that they listen. What they told me the other day, man, I say one monkey don't stop no show. This thing going to continue to roll with 
or without you. It's either you want to be a part of it or you don't. Because guess what? Last time I checked, the, the, the country is flooded with peoples, right? And your support ain't or not supporting ain't going to change nothing. If you're not bold like that, you better get bold like that. You better listen to this message again until you get bold like that. You better inbox me and say, Pastor Q, I want to get bold to the point where I can talk sassy. I didn't say disrespectful. I want to be sassy. I want to be able to talk with boldness. I want to be able to speak and say, listen, I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if, if, if how you feel about what I believe. If you want to leave, you can leave. I'm not going to compromise. If you got a 30-day rule, if you got a 90-day rule, and he or she don't want to stay, hey, listen, do what you want to do and don't be afraid, come on now, of somebody not staying because you won't compromise. You know the thing about it, I've listened to somebody talking about something with dating the other day and they were saying it's, it's so hard to date right now because so many people are putting out on the first couple of days and first night than, than, than other people. But if you have been uh, called by God and to be able to hold on and to be able to stay clean and, and, and to not be able to fornicate and somebody said they can get it from somebody else the first day, you can't be afraid to be able to let things go. If somebody trying to force you into a place of compromise, you can't be afraid to say, hey, listen, man, I'm not afraid of losing you. I got to stand on the principles of God. Samuel should have stood there and I don't care how many people left. He should have been like, you know what? I'm just going to, I mean, Saul should have stood there and said, I don't care how many people leave and scatter. I'm waiting on Samuel to come. Sometimes during your waiting, you lose people. And guess what? That's okay. I got to tell, I got to inform you that that's okay. It's okay for people to leave. I don't know why we think it's not okay for people to leave. Say, God, bless me with such a boldness that it's okay when you leave. It's okay that we stop talking. It's okay that you stop liking. It is okay. I'm okay with that. Because a lot of times I've learned with Facebook, I got five, I keep 5,000 friends. Not in every can see, but I do. But I always notice there's a person who really wants to be my friend who is going to support. I got about, I got 5,000 friends, 29 people that's watching this broadcast, right? And I got about, when I let, when I check my friend request, I got a lot of people who wait in pocket to become my friends, right? So I need to delete some people in order to get them on, right? Now, here's the thing. Here's the, something I go through as Pastor Q. I really don't know who to delete because it's 5,000 people. I don't want to delete somebody that really watches secretly because we always, we all got them lurkers on our page, right? They don't share, don't like nothing like that, but they just lurking. And I go to it. I see you don't share, you don't like nothing. Sometimes I delete you because, you know, you just don't share like nothing. It ain't nothing personal. And then I'm trying to add people on who need to be on my page because I got 4,700 people on my page who don't share or like because... I look at the numbers and I see that they're not what participating, but it's not about the numbers. I'm just trying to teach you how you can have people blocking people who's supposed to be there because your life can be filled with people who are just sitting there. I want people on my boat that's rowing, not looking at my boat as a tourist attraction on this boat. I need rowers. I don't need people on here riding. I need rowers. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about changing my page to say, I need rowers, not riders. People say, I need me a rider. I don't want another rider. All I want is rowers. Row, row, row your boat. I don't want no more riders in my life. All I want I don't want no more um, riders. All I want is people that's going to row. On my page right now, all I have is riders. I have very few rowers. So guess what? I should blow my whole page up, start all over, and let people know, hey, this page is for the rowers. The last page... Riders. I'll just post pictures for them to look at what Saxon Neemans has released lately because that's all they worried about. Because I got people on my page, the only thing they comment about is where I get my shoes and where I get my shirts and stuff. That's not offense to nobody, but I'm just trying to tell you that because I like nice stuff. I get more people that pay attention to what I wear, what I drive, what I do, where I go to eat at. I want a page for the nosy people, but then I want my page for my, 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 my rowers at Word Movers, right? I want a page for the people I can pray with, support who really care about not people who see my stuff and secretly um, don't like it but see everything I do but don't acknowledge those are writers I need more page of rowers right now I got 29 viewers of 
rowers. My other riders are just waiting for me to post something that they can talk about. Because when I when I post something they don't like, they talk about it, and and but they don't like it. But when they see me, they say, "Yeah, well, you know, uh, you have some particular sweatpants on or something, and people can see your print." But you don't like nothing I do for his ministry. But you want to correct my dress because you are not a uh, rower; you are just a rider, and riders critique like passengers. Passengers always want to tell somebody how to get somewhere, but notice they don't have their own car to drive in. But passengers always know how to get somewhere and tell me I'm going the wrong way. Look out for that because you're a passenger. Learn to be able to be a learn to be a rower, a driver. Passengers know how to get more places than the driver do. Hmm. It always uh, amazes me that the passenger is the one who knows everything and how to get everywhere because he's used to riding, not used to rowing, not used to driving, not used to contributing, but sitting back, enjoying the ride. I tell you what, after this message right here, you don't want another rider. Let me tell you what, your Facebook page is full of riders, not rowers. Nobody's rowing. Everybody's riding. What if I told you that everybody's riding on a page that you pay the bill, T-Mobile, Sprint? I don't know what your service is, but you're paying for people to sit there and do nothing. Man, I will blow that whole joint up and start all over and get me some riders. Friends, they're not friends. They are riders. They're just sitting on my page doing nothing. Come on, man. 5,000 friends. I got 30 people. Where are the other 47, 4,800 people at? Are they riders or they rowers? They riders. I don't need no riders. Samuel, he got a lot of riders. Because if he had rowers, I don't care how long God make you wait, I'm going to stay there if I'm your friend. So guess what happens? Look at this. Now what happened in verse 10 of Samuel as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, well, when I saw that the people were, listen to what he said. He wasn't supposed to do that until Saul got there. Matter of fact, Saul was again, listen to his excuse of why he moved ahead. When I saw that the people were scattered from me and, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at, at Michmash. Listen, I, got, I was concerned about the people leaving. You didn't come on time. And, and, and I seen what was going on around me. That made me move. Mm. God said, no, you can't be mine. You, 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 you moving off of things going on around you. I didn't tell you to move. See, see, when you, you, you got to be in a place. Let me teach you a great teaching. When God had to teach prophet Elisha. Remember the story where the Bible says that God took him to the mountain. As a matter of fact, let me let me let me let me see if I can find it real quick. Sometimes I can find scripture uh, right away, and then sometimes you know I have an issue and I struggle with it at times. Uh, First Kings chapter nineteen says this. I want you to read something, right? Uh, it says um, God told Elijah. He said, "Go and stand on the mountain. Go out and stand on the mountain." And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before, before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire, still small voice. What God was teaching the prophet Elijah right there is that don't move or assume Lean not to your own understanding based off of circumstances that's going around you because things that's going on around you doesn't necessarily mean that I'm speaking. I still speak through a still small voice. So though people move, though there's a COVID-19, though all things may be happening around you, wind, storms, rain, hail, whatever, don't base that off something I'm saying. I'm still speaking to you the same way, but I need you to learn how to not move when you, by the circumstances, only move when you hear me, because so many people move based off of circumstances, not moving based off of when I speak. If you learn how to move off of my voice 
and not move based off the things you see. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I don't move according to what I see. I move according to what I hear. If you allow every little thing that you hear dictate how you move, then you will lose your identity because now you will start dressing and doing and liking based off of what you see, not off of what you hear. You got to make sure you're hearing for God because if you're not hearing from God, then you're hearing from people and people will secretly and uh, subconsciously change your identity based off of what you hear. So what people be saying about me, then you'll start shopping, dressing, doing all things based off of what people say and you won't be hearing God. You will be hearing people and that's how you will make your decisions. Saul has based his decision making off of the people off of delay and off of his positioning. He was told to wait, but he says, listen what he says. I love this. When I saw that the people were scattered from me, can I teach you? When we feel like we're losing friends, losing views, I'm going to tell you what, I, I follow some of you guys, right? I don't pick, that ain't what I do as a pastor, but I noticed that you you know, when things get a little dry with your life, you start taking off more clothes or you start saying more type of saying type of things that you think going to get you more views and likes with Instagram and all that. I've seen a lot of you take and do some questionable things for people. And when you feel like your likes are down, because a lot of people check views, a lot of people check likes and that's such a dangerous place to be in. I've been there before because I had people who had worked with me about advertising and people come to me and say, Pastor Q, I noticed that this video from three weeks ago, you had 1,500 views, but then this Sunday, you only had like 300 people. And I'm like, I wonder why that is. It, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's not, and guess what? It doesn't mean that the word was better that week. It just means that more people tuned in. But guess what can happen, right? Uh, subconsciously and what I'll try to do, I'll try to go back to that last video and say, what did I do then that made the people like this video? And then you become a people pleaser because you'll try to, um, that's like a perfect example in, in the music industry, right? People always try to duplicate, imitate, or recreate. Sometimes, you know, one hit wonders make the biggest mistake of trying to make another song like the song that made them popular. And, and, and that's it doesn't work like that. But we always try to go back to the thing that was a hit or that's a set. You need to make another song like that. You need another outfit like that. And that's why you end up buying the same outfit 60,000 times because this particular outfit got more likes than that one. And people say, I just bought it all. I bought the red one. I bought the black one. I bought the green one. You didn't bought every color. And, and, and it, it, it couldn't have been that, right? And you just stuck with that because you felt like that particular look, that particular outfit. Uh, when I go back red, it's something about red. They love the blonde. They love the blondes. They love the brunettes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going gold this time. I'm, 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 this time when I get the bundles, they're going to be 16. When I used to have the 24 inches, the hair all the way down my back. Look at the pictures back when you had the bundles. Now when your hair short, the hair was long. I had more lights when my hair short. Many people ain't like it. I'm going back blonde. Blondes do it better. I'm doing Look what all I'm doing for people, right? When, when, I, when, I, when I had this on, when I bent over this way, or I put the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the popsicle in my wife's mouth this way, I had more shares and lights. But doing this thing like this, I don't get that many likes. Look how people... You better learn to be able to move without an audience because their audience is so dangerous. It's so dangerous, man. That's why that's what happened to child stars. Why do you think child stars never make it a lot of time? A few of them make it, but they started so young and they don't know how to be able to handle success. Why do you think a lot of the musicians and things like that get to a place of depression, start doing drugs and have where are we now stories? Because the audience made them feel special. And when they didn't have the special, they start chasing hits. Just like a person that does drugs. You chase hits. You chase feeling. Man, I got to get another number one song. Man, I, I, I got to get the song like I had in the 90s. If I can get Teddy Riley and them to, to write me something like I had back then. Teddy, uh, uh, who, who the writers out here? I need somebody. Get Neo. Uh, um, whoever wrote that song. I need that type of song back when I was number one. And they chased that high. And guess what? They never have another hit again. Let me tell you what. 90% of what you hear on the radio today won't be on the radio next year. I trust and guarantee you because that's how the industry moves. They make you somebody today and then they throw you away. That's why what God showed me in ministry, if you caught the first part of this message, what, what he was teaching me in the beginning, he says, listen, you got to learn, Q, 
how to stay who you are without an audience because today they're going to love you and tomorrow they're not going to like you. It's going to be a new pastor. He's going to raise up and he's going to do something different. I remember I was listening to something from, I think it was Jay-Z. And Jay-Z, when he was when he first came out, he was saying he, he tried to step over and do what Puffy and them did with all the dancing. And he said he didn't even like the album he made. I think it was the song with Sunshine he did with Foxy Brown. But what he was basically saying is that he tried to change his music to be up to date. Like that's like Jay-Z or somebody uh, uh, um, rappers from the back in the day coming back now and trying to do mumble rap. Like that ain't your thing. So regardless if you're selling or not, you got to put that joint out there and let whoever buy it, buy it. But I can't start preaching. You know, the thing about it is I can't start I, right now. I'm 10, 11 years in my own church. I've been in ministry 20 years. I've, I've always been this way, not dressing up, getting the truth. I'm not a preaching type person. I don't, Lord says, ha, I don't do all the hissing. I don't jump up and down. I do get excited, but I can't tomorrow start yelling and jumping up and down because there's people who like, there's more people on this platform that like to be preached to than taught. If you understand, there's a Facebook video going on around right now. A little kid sitting in front of a computer playing with his homework. He's heard people preach. He hasn't heard people teach. So he's learned how to imitate pastors. If you listen to the little boy, he's imitating preaching, but he's turned preaching into his homework. He's not really saying anything, but he's learned how to preach because you don't need scripture to preach. It's all emotions. It's all a way of doing it. So everybody who knows how to preach don't actually know the Bible because the little boy was preaching about his homework and sound just like the sermons that I hear on Sunday. Where did he get that from? He goes to a church where they preach and they don't teach. And you know what he's doing is imitating preaching. He's not imitating what he's being taught. If I do that, I'm going to lose all of you guys who love the way I teach. And I'm going to gain everybody who love the way I preach. I choose to stay me, stay grounded in what I do and allow my process, though it may be slow, for God to engraft and bring in people who love the teaching of his word than the exciting preaching. Because I tell you, I can't preach like that. There's some people on this platform, they preach, they sweat, they jump up and down. And I mean, y'all be getting all excited and I be listening like, for what? Like, what did he say? Like, I don't get it. But that's because I'm a teacher and it's not me hating it's just I'm listening and I'm like, I don't get it, but y'all get it because you have been taught to be preached to. You have been taught to be encouraged. So all somebody got to do is ha, God said ha, he's going to move ha. And that's, you hear the rhythm. It's like drums. It's like Congo. I don't care who's playing the drums of Congo's. I'm going to bop because I'm from D.C. and that's my movement. So I don't know who the band is, but I know the rhythm. So it makes me dance. So I didn't know that most people fell in love with preaching, never fell in love with teaching. Jesus didn't preach. Jesus taught the people so that they can understand. I read something the other day that I thought was so amazing. 90% of people who are being preached to leave church feeling good, but don't have a clue of where to find in the scriptures what was preached, but they have a feeling which they know how to feel, but don't know how to go back into the scripture to read during the week when they go through something because pastor gave no scriptures or teaching something to stick to you. He gave me something to make me feel good and feelings are like gas. Eventually it runs out and you need more of it. But if you've been taught, you wrote down, you used your highlighter, you took notes. And when something went wrong during the week, you had something to reference, to go back to. But when I've been preached to, I got to go back and play the tape again and get excited again, but still don't have no substance. I found out that you attract more people with preaching than you do with teaching, but I'm going to stick to teaching because that's all I know to do and want to do because teaching is what I do. Preaching ain't my thing. A lot of people preach better than me. They know how to get people more excited than me. That's what people want people to preach so they can break out into the praise dance and, and it all goes in alignment with the choir and with the drums so they can catch the Holy Ghost. But I'm not that guy. 
but I know if I would become a preacher, I can have more people on this platform. If I became a person who preached prosperity, I can have more people on this platform. Some of us know how to get more people, but if getting more people is going to cause me to lose myself, I don't want more people. How many of you women, and I'm going to say women, go out to the mall and you shop? And, and I've seen women do this. You say, you know what? I can wear this, but I don't even want the attention this is going to bring because you know you thick, right? And you know you curvous and you you curve and you voluptuous. You say, I can buy this, but no, nah, I, I don't even want that type of attention. I don't even want people to perceive me that way. Um, but really, I can shut the joint down, but... Can I teach you that you have put something back on the rack that you didn't want to wear out because you just didn't want the attention it was going to bring you. You you go through pictures sometime and you say, I can I, I don't even know if I should post this because I, I mean, when I took it, 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 I didn't take it to get likes, but it do look like you can see through. My pant, you can see through the dress and you can see through my bra, but I didn't take it for that. But you got to understand that somebody took that same picture to get a different response. But when you took it, you didn't take it for that. And sometimes you got some pictures, somebody say amen, in your phone that you don't post because you don't want the type of inboxes that may come with that type of picture. So you say, you know what, though I took it in intimacy, I'm not even going to post it because I don't want these lurkers to think I don't want to wake up with uh, p inappropriate pictures in my inbox. How much time I got? Inappropriate pictures in my inbox. Somebody thinking I'm being thirsty, so therefore I'm not even going to post it. I know the girls are sitting up high in this one. I'm not even going to post it because I don't want nobody to think that I'm trying to draw an audience. Trust, I'm happy. I got somebody. Um, I don't. I'm not even want nobody to think that I'm on here trying to get anybody. Um, but there are some on this platform that choose to show a little bit more skin so they can get a little bit more kin, right? And some of us have chose to cover up and be sexy and still get what I'm supposed to have because sometimes we leave things to the imagination. I don't want to have to show you everything before you see it. That's great teaching. But listen, some people are on this platform for an audience. Get out of needing an audience. Listen, listen, listen what... uh. I want to go back to the scripture of teaching. He says this, when I saw the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You know why? You moved according to the people. You moved according to to fear. You move according to everything except what God thought and what God felt. You did it because the response of how people felt. Let me teach you something. The hardest message as a pastor to preach is sin. The hardest message to preach is the truth. At the funeral, the easy... <sighs> That's my alarm. Every funeral... You're forced to preach a lie about people going to heaven. You've been, <laughs> you've been forced to, families call pastors every day to preach funerals of people going to heaven that the pastor don't know. The hardest funeral to preach is the truth. Every funeral, it, most funerals I preach is a lie 90% of the time. The pastor don't even know the person they're preaching. Of. Don't even know if they were saved. Don't know anything about them. But they do it for what? The family. I can't stand up there and tell a family that their person, the loved one going to hell. It just don't go along with the funeral. You just can't do stuff like that. You can, but people don't because they want an offering. And a lot of people are preaching for an audience. And the thing about God is that God, uh, you, you talked about this in the book of Ezekiel, you told Ezekiel uh, that, uh, you know, if he didn't preach the word of God to its entirety and preach the truth, that the blood of the people will be on his hands. And when you understand true ministry, you know that, man, I don't want to uh, preach and make people feel comfortable 
just so I can have an audience. I learned that, you know, the phony you are, the faker you are, the less truth you tell, the less friends you have. Um, but I mean, the more truth, um, the, the phony you are and all that, the more friends you have, the more truth you tell, less friends and things that you'll have. Um, Saul had a hard time being king because Saul was a people pleaser. And, you know, in the scripture, Jesus says in Luke chapter 9 and 26, he says, if you be ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. A lot of times I've learned on this platform, uh, people don't share my videos and, and I'm not trying to get promotion this morning. I just want to teach you. People don't share my videos because their page, they have other people on their page who they care about their feelings. I've had people tell me, man, I post to queue out, man, my post, man, my page ratchet, man. I don't even want to post your video on there. People think I'm a hypocrite. So you didn't post my video on your page because you, you, you concerned about people on your page that don't pay your phone bill. Is that what you're telling me? You, you ain't post my video because you concerned about people on your page that don't put no money in your pocket. Don't <clears throat> have nothing to do with your daily necessity. You mean to tell me you didn't, you didn't share me. God said you didn't share my word. For some people who don't make sure you eat every day. Oh, dang. Like, like real talk. Like, that's that's how we moving out here. Jesus said, you'd be ashamed of me before me. I'd be ashamed of you for my father. What he basically talking about is that, man, you can't have no secret relation with me. Rich, secret relation where you in a, you in a closet with me. <clears throat> I watched this, I watched something on BET the other day, right? This is great teaching, right? Um, It's not even a show that I watched. But you know how you stumbled upon something in the middle of the night? I think it was Boomerang or some show on um, BET. And um, it was two guys that was in a homosexual relationship. And the guy told the other guy, he says, you know what? I noticed when we're in the house together, you know, it's lovey dovey, you all on me and stuff. He said, but when we get out in public, you know, you be distant. Like we're not together. And I feel some type of way. I feel like, you know, it's okay for us to be gay when we're in the house. But then when we get out in front around people, around your family, you be distant, acting like we're not gay. So the one guy that was in a relationship, um, from my understanding of tops and bottoms and things, I guess he was the bottom. He said he didn't want to be in a relationship no more because he didn't want to be a secret anymore. Um, and a lot of, and, and, and that's how we do people. We want to have it um, closed behind closed doors. It's an open relationship. But then when we get out in the open, we act like there's nothing going on. So the one guy was telling the other guy, he says, listen, um, it's either you're going to be gay in the house and out the house, but I don't want to get out here and hide the relationship. And when I saw he said that, I began to think about the Lord Jesus Christ in the scripture. Is that a lot of us have a, a great relationship with God in church. We praise, we sing and do all that. But then we get out around our friends and we don't have that same type of language around God. And what he's basically saying is that I don't like the fact that you worship and praise me in church. Catch the Holy Ghost, clear all the scriptures, and then you get out of church and live like you don't even know me. But in church, your language and your lingo your clothing and all that. Cause a lot of us have, uh, you know, <clears throat> they say, they tell people living homosexual lives that they come out of the closet. Christians go in the closet to pray. Coming out of the closet means that an individual should be open with their faith and not feel ashamed how other people are going to feel. Uh, so many people are ashamed to talk about their faith because um, how other people are going to feel. There's a song, I think it's on channel eight or channel five. Um, it's the it's the new song about United We Stand. And I'm gonna tell you what, because I used to write lyrics, there's a great part in the song about God. They where they could have put God, but they said each person needs something. Um, and you together we stand. I forgot the song go, but you guys see all the time you watch the news, but it's the song that's on channel five or channel eight that they play all the time about the COVID-19 and how we come together. Nowhere in the song does it say anything about God, but they wrote the song to say how much about us needing each other when in this time we need God. But the reason why they couldn't put God in there is because there are some um, atheists that that would offend. So therefore, they couldn't put God in the song because it would offend people. So they just had to just make it like, hey, it's just we the people. We are the world. Right. We don't need God. But how we don't need God. But they couldn't say it because of who they would offend. So. You know, the Bible tells us too, and I'm going to close with this. He talks about um, the road of the straight and the narrow, um, I think it's in Matthew chapter seven. Uh, so, you know, I started off this message talking about not needing an audience, not needing 
um, a lot of people to do what God has called you to do. Let me just read you the scripture. He says, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go and buy it because narrow is the gate and difficult or the difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Don't feel some type of way when you're on this path and there's not a lot of people. A lot of us are loners on this path, meaning that there's a lot of Christians, right? But the path that God has caused you to called you to take, you may feel like a loner. The path where everybody's at, that could be the road of destruction. Just because everybody's going that way, that doesn't mean that's where you're supposed to go. Sometimes the road that God is calling you out, calling you and I on is a lonely road. Very few people find it. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a popularity contest. People share me videos all the time that people preaching and they got way more views than me, way more shares than me. And sometimes I used to look at them like, man, we saying the same thing. What is he saying? I ain't saying, you know, the thing about it. I don't know what that individual has given up. I don't know. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, loses his soul? Sometimes people have more than you because of what they've sold what they've given up. I don't know what type of covenant you're in with the devil. I'm going to close my Bible. I don't know what type of covenant you're in. I don't know if you sold your soul. I don't know what you have done behind closed doors. I don't know what blood you sprinkled. I don't know what agreement you are in with Satan to have the type of um, followers you have or what you had to compromise. But one thing for sure, if it causes me to compromise my beliefs and what I stand for, then I'm not going to be as popular as you because Jesus taught me, God taught me in the beginning. He says, Q, this is not a popularity contest. It's not about, it's not a popularity contest. He said, what if I told you that the page that has um, 50K likes, 50K viewers, none of them people got saved. But if, you're, if your broadcast has five people and, five, and, and four of those people or one of those people's got saved, then God says, I will say to you, well done and good and faithful servant. God says every video that has 5K and has millions of views, people are not being saved off of it. It's just popular. Don't get caught up in the popularity contest out here. My word today to you, listen, I do not need an audience. You don't need an audience. Jesus told Peter and he told the disciples in the garden when they were getting ready to take him, he said, do you not think that I can't call down, call to God right now? And he will give me more than 12 leaders of angels. Jesus said, if y'all want an audience, I can have an audience. I don't need to call my audience down here because my audience is looking down, looking at me from heaven. But don't think at any given time I can't call to God and he can, can't give me more than 12 legions of angels. I think a legion of angels is 6,000, 6 times 12. I think that's probably like 72,000, 70, something like that. It's like 6,000, I think, is a legion of angels. And, and, you know, you do the math on that. Jesus says right now I can have that type of audience, but I'll go to the cross by myself before I have an audience. A lot of times you're not going to have an audience. Father, we thank you right now that you bless us with your word. Teach us to be able to move in spirit and truth and not to focus on the audience, oh, Father God. Lord, and may we, may we just feel comfortable with you and doing your will, oh, Father, and not needing shares and likes and views, oh, Father God. Bless us accordingly. I'm Pastor Q, man. I love you guys.